Now we're recording. Okay. All right. All right, everybody. Today we are here with uh, Stanley Dirt Monkey Genetic, and I am, I, I really am, I'm excited uh, about this one. Uh, I've been watching Stanley's videos a lot this past week, and he's got a lot of good information. And uh, he came highly recommended from another interview we've already had from John Malecki. So I'm excited to have him with us and uh, share about what he does. He's right here again in Minnesota, right where we're at, and uh, is pretty local to us. So we're going to get right to it. So can you tell us uh, about who you are and what you do for a living? Sure. Can I ask you a question first, Jake? Absolutely. Have you ever been not excited about interviewing somebody? I, no, I seriously, like you bring the energy, um, you bring the, <laughs> just all of it. I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I'm, you know, having a, having Jimmy dressed is one thing, but uh, having someone who's local and who's doing it right, um, you know, it's always a good thing. So Jimmy's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, no, I'm actually a local contractor, so I do dirt work. Um, so I do a lot of demolition, excavation. Um, I wrote a book called The Jack of All Trades, Master of Two. And what basically that meant was um, as a contractor, you need to have a very wide range of skills. But that wide range of skills is really good at feeding you, but it's not good at helping you build your dream. Okay. okay. And so when I talk to other contractors and people that are thinking about getting into, into the industry, what I tell them to do is to concentrate on acquiring two, two skills, two trades, two different, whatever you want to call it, that they love. They got to feel it in their heart, right? It's got to be some, a, a project of passion for them and then to absolutely excel at those. And so if you're going to ask me, what do I actually do? I build retaining walls better than anybody else on the block, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I demolish and remove swimming pools. Okay. And the reason yeah. I picked removing swimming pools is because I love wrecking stuff. Right. And I'm all wrecking house after house and building after building. And they're falling down and I'm watching them go down and I'm thinking, you know, this one falls the wrong way. It could really damage the house next to it. But I don't want to stop wrecking things. Sure. So what's a safer way to wreck things? And I thought, well, I'll wreck things that are already in a hole. Let's demolish swimming pools. So that's where the hole, that's where I got started from. Okay. Wow. Okay. So how, so how did you even start in this business as far as contracting? How did that begin for you? 13 years old. My dad bought a cat excavator and he says, you look like you could run that. <laughs> like I do. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, go out into the field and go do that. And that's where it all started from. So I've been doing it my whole life, uh, growing up out in the country, just jumping on it and teaching myself. And my lessons were, the only lessons I've ever had, formal training, was like when I was trying to teach myself how to run a dump truck, one of those big giant trucks that go down the road hauling, you know, they're, they weigh 36,000 pounds. And so I never didn't have the license or nothing to do it, and I bought one. <laughs> and... I, I bought it from a garage of diesel shop and I said to the mechanic, Hey, what do all these buttons do? Yeah. And he looked at me like, are you stupid? You just paid $20,000 for a truck. You don't have a license to drive and know what the buttons do. And I'm like, no, seriously, what do the buttons do? Yeah. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> and you learn pretty fast when you right. jump, you know, right into it. Right. So what would you say? Like, and I've been watching some of the other videos and you talk about that, and, you know, it's kind of a lot of learn as you go, but especially for students who are maybe a little bit intimidated, um, you know, whether it's woodworking for what I'm teaching or automotive, um, what's some recommendations you would have for students who are, let's say, intimidated to kind of jump in and maybe don't have as much curiosity just to ask, hey, what does this do or what does that do? How does this work? Um, Start small and never stop learning right always always think your brain is always on you know your brain actually burns as much electricity as a 10 watt light bulb 24 hours a day seven days a week it never shuts off okay the only time it shuts off is when you intentionally shut it off and i never intentionally shut my brain off i'm always thinking so when i'm not at work i'm thinking about work i'm right. trying to figure out better ways to do things and I just let it flow and I don't interrupt that by doing things like 
playing video games or listening to music and there's nothing wrong with those things and I allow myself that time to kind of have some downtime but I also watch how much time I actually spend doing things that are I consider them to be non-productive to my end goal mm -hmm. and so I'm always even when I'm not at work I'm always trying to figure out better ways to do whatever it is I do to become the best possible version of myself okay and the second thing I would like to tell these guys is to find the thing that you love to do and do more of that. Yeah, because yeah, if, yeah. if you try to become the best at everything, you'll become mediocre at everything, right. right? But if you figure out what the heck it is that makes you tick and you just concentrate on being the best possible version of that, you will absolutely excel and become the top 5% of whatever it is you want to achieve. That's how we get people that are amazing at doing all of these different things. And I don't care if it's playing tennis, I don't care if it's playing a violin, sport, or inside of the trades. It's all the same. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've had the same situation. I was a tech uh, for automotive for BMW for a long time. And it's, yeah, it's, I'm watching what other guys are doing and how they're taking stuff apart and studying them and how can I do this a little bit better. But yeah, absolutely. I think, I think you're right on. Um, so, from, because I know you've done you've done um, commercial contracting, and then I'm not going to get into that. But then you made the switch into residential contracting, and let's just maybe take it from maybe when you made that switch to now. What have been some of the things? What's been the kind of, kind of progression for you um, as far as residential to kind of you know jumping into that field and being able to make some more money at residential to even maybe where you are today. Okay, so I started out actually in residential. Okay. And not knowing any better, I went to commercial and then switched back to residential. And I remember I was 20 years old and I bought a house and I was, gonna re I was rehabbing this house. And at the same time, I was running my excavating company. I remember landing my first two big contracts, contracts Jacob. And the first one was for four grand and the other one was for $4,500. And I sat on the end of my bed like this. And I'm sitting there going, holy cow, I've got $8,500 worth of contracts. This is amazing. Right. And they kept concentrating on working. And four years later, I remember sitting in an office going, I've got a $40,000 contract. I've got a $90,000 contract and a $150,000 contract. This is just because I started small and I kept working up, right? And it's like, Okay, do I want the forty thousand dollar contract or do I want to concentrate on the ninety and one hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract? Right. And so it's you got to learn to walk before you run. But if you're constantly improving, never looking back, except to figure out ways that you made mistakes and mistakes. I'm going to challenge you guys and the and the guys watching this right now. Mistakes are your absolute best friend in the entire world. They are the best thing that can ever happen to you because they are the catalysts that will launch you onward and upward. It's how you handle that mistake that either builds character or defeats you. Right. So as long as you understand, all right, I got a setback, mm -hmm. what am I going to do to improve upon that? Mm -hmm. And you actually take the actions necessary to improve then you permanently step up to the next level. You may step back a little bit, but you always have these lessons that will keep you at this point and going onward and upward. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of, the, you talked about um, demolishing things. That's something that you really enjoy doing. Uh, and that's an enjoyable part about this job. What are some other things that kind of keep you moving forward or that you really enjoy about what you do? Challenges. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. Exploring the unknown and putting myself into uncomfortable situations constantly. I love it. Yeah. Thrive off from it. And so if you can condition yourself, remember a habit just takes seven times to repeat itself, right? You can form a good habit or a bad habit by just doing something just this many times. And if you can uh, get used to getting yourself uncomfortable and always striving to push yourself forward, pretty soon you'll crave that. Just like you crave the negative things, negative attention or negative whatever, you can crave positive things as well. So putting myself into situations that force me to be uncomfortable, whether it's a social situation or something else, I mean, 
I'm not a people person. I would rather sit at home and watch TV, but I force myself to go out, hang out, talk, communicate, improve my communications, improve all of these different things that make me uncomfortable constantly 24 seven. And that is one of those things that I, I recommend to anybody out there that's listening. Okay. And on the flip side of that, what are some of the things that are more difficult parts of your job that you have to deal with? People. Yeah. People are the most, people are the most unpredictable part of this right. thing. And the secret to dealing with people, there is a secret. It's over communicate. It's communicate till they no longer want to see you, hear you. They just want you to go away. Right, and you're right. like, are you sure this is okay? Are you sure you like this? You know, we can change this if you really wanted to, but boy, I really like this. And you just overdo it. And pretty soon they understand that you really are trying to do your absolute best that you possibly can. And when they, you, you want to get them. So here's one of those secret things that I'm going to share with these guys. When you learn to connect with your customers, you, and that comes through communication, you can do a mediocre job and they will still love it. Mm -hmm. See, if you do an amazing job, but they don't like you, they're not going to like your work. It could be the best job in the world, but if you argued with them or you gave them the cold shoulder one day or something happened where you're not completely jiving together, right. it doesn't matter how good your work is. On the flip side of that coin, if you just are doing average work, mm -hmm. but the customer loves you, just right. like your parents love you or your uncle loves you or whoever it is, they're going to go, this is awesome. Look right. at what they did. Right. And you're like, could do better <laughs> but but you have succeeded in communicating where most people don't understand that that is right. the secret that will take you further than anything else and and for everybody listening i mean you've got a great four-part series on on what your word means and I'm trying to remember the actual title what's what's the title of that four-part video that you did at the conference your mouth makes you your money. Your mouth makes you your money. And that's, that's a really great video, I think, for anybody, whether you're a student or you're trying to get into business, where you were talking about when, when you're able to communicate well and to be the professional and someone that, that, that the customer trusts because you know what you're talking about, um, that means everything. So, yeah, and that was, that was really, really even good for me just to, to look at and hear for just for my own sake, for goodness sakes. Uh, so I would really encourage, and I'll, I'll link that down below for everybody to take a look at, because I think it's, it's really, really good. Um, so we already touched, I'm going to skip a question because you just touched on it. So um, you do some other things. I mean, because let's touch on that real quick. What, what else do you do besides contracting? Can you just list some of those things off? Uh. I guess I don't even know what you're referring to. No, I mean, I do mean, so many you, different you things. Got a small, small YouTube channel. I mean, just a few followers. Yeah. Oh, you want to, oh, my YouTube? Yeah, yeah I mean, that was another one of those challenges. Yeah. That was another one of those things where I'm a contractor and, uh, you know, with an obsessive personality. And I, I was challenged to, yeah. um, to do something. And it's one of those things where, I, you know, I've conditioned myself to never try anything half-hearted. Right. I will only try something and attempt to do something if I try it at 110 to 120%, yeah. right? And so I was challenged by a friend of mine, his name's Keith Kalfas on YouTube to start a YouTube channel. And so what that meant was that meant I took a year okay. of studying YouTube. Yeah. I mean, literal staying up till I'm, I'm working all day long. Yeah, yeah. And then at night I would study, why are there some people that they, they put out a video that gets a hundred views and the next guy puts out a video and it gets a hundred thousand views. What's the difference between those two guys? There's got to be something happening there. And then the, the ability to start to decode this. Now this is into a genre that I know, know nothing about media cameras. Don't, I don't know how to turn on a camera. I started YouTube with an iPhone four an iPhone four. Now I've updated to an iPhone 11 and since then I've got fancier rigs, right? But I started, I started, that's the most important. Do not fall into the analysis 
paralysis where you think, 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 but you refuse to move. Try it, analyze what worked, try it again, analyze what didn't work, and keep going back and forth, at least try. Right, right. You've got to have a launching point, and that's where you start to grow from. Right, right. And so that's what I did with YouTube. I just put a video out, put the next one out, improved it. I mean, even now with this whole COVID thing, you guys are sitting home and people are like, oh, I'm just going stir crazy. And I'm like, I've never worked harder, <laughs> right? Because this, this has allowed me to literally come back to center yeah. Yeah. and to refine the craft. And just within the last two months, I have completely changed how I formulate videos where if, I, if we didn't have COVID, we didn't have all this stuff going on, I would have not had this time to absolutely concentrate because when you are on a mission to become the absolute best version of yourself possible, there is never downtime. There's never time for you to just go, oh yeah, I'm not going to do anything or I'm bored. Yeah. I've been bored typically three times a year. That is literally, and it's the worst feeling ever. And it's usually yeah. for one afternoon. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and how often do you do trainings as well? I mean, not right now, but how often are you even doing those? Is that just a couple, few times a year or how often is that for you? Trainings, what, what are you actually You're doing like, let's say a speaking engagement or training for other contractors or things like that. Or is that just, some of those videos are just kind of one-off things. Uh, six days a week, pretty much. Okay. So whether if I'm doing like something like this, which is trying to help, you know, more of an, in a direct way, or I create a video, I'm trying to help people out in some way, shape or form from in some form of expression. That's just what the way I'm wired a little bit. Okay. So six days a week. Okay, that's good. Uh, what I'll just leave you, well, I got two more questions. Um, one, uh, any other advice for a uh, 14 to 18 year old young man, a young woman um, thinking about doing something like this for a career where they've got, you know, a lot of options, a lot of things coming at them. Um, they're really good with working with their hands. They like being creative. They like getting dirty and they don't mind that. Uh, and they're thinking about doing something like this, like what you do for a career, what would be some of your, maybe some other, your other recommendations for them? Ask questions. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to have a grandpa, an uncle, or somebody that has a piece of equipment showing you what to do. You've got to ask questions. You've got to show the initiative. You've got to take the initiative. You don't just show it. You, you bring it. You bring it, and if the first person you ask doesn't respond, you ask the next one. You ask the next one. You ask the next one until you start to get noticed. I had a 19 year old kid and you guys can see the interview right now. He's doing $600,000 a year in business. One year out of high school. Mm -hmm. He started his business when he was, I think a sophomore in high school. And I actually documented his, he's actually on my YouTube channel, 600,000, 19 year old makes $600,000 a year. Here's the story. He shows up on my door my front door. I've never met him before in my life. He tracks me down and comes to my house and knocks on my door. That's, that is taking the initiative. Yeah. Since then, I've done speaking engagements down in Illinois and across the country. Mm -hmm. And I never know who's going to be in the audience, but you know who's there? The kid that lives 20 miles away from me yeah. is there. He's there and just taking in as much information as he possibly can whenever he possibly can. We're talking about that's what I mean by taking the bull by the horns. When you do that, I will make each and every single one of you a promise. When you do that, you will have whatever it is you want in life. I don't care if you're a contractor. I don't care if you work for online marketing. I don't care what you do. But when you are that bound and determined that nothing will stop you, that everything is just a stepping stone in the way for you accomplishing your goal. And as you rise to the top, you never step on anybody going up. Right. You carry them with you. Mm -hmm. So as you're rising, you're bringing an army along with you because you're going to fall back. And when you fall back, you guys, 
You're going to have an army of support, an army of people that knew that you were there to help them along the way. They're going to prop you up, build you up, and carry you along. There we go. There we go. And see, and so you asked what, you know, do I say I'm excited about all of these, but here's what, this is why everybody, <laughs> right? He brings energy. He brings the passion. He knows what he's talking about. And, and I love it. And I, I do really do. I really do. So one last question. If my students want to find out or anybody wants to find out more about you, where's the best place to find out more about you? All right. Uh, Instagram, Stanley Dirt Monkey Genetic. Okay. YouTube, same thing, Stanley Dirt Monkey Genetic. There is Dirt Monkey. That's a dubstep band. Some of you guys probably know it. They're actually pretty good. Wrong thing. <laughs> so that's the best way to, if you wanted to follow along, see some of the videos that I'm doing, whatever the newest, latest, and greatest is, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Stanley. Appreciate it. And we'll see you later.